Chris again from Chris Swift Studio. Welcome back. And in today's video, we're going to be going over all the techniques you need to know and all the ones that are available in Final Cut Pro 10 for panning stereo audio. I brought into the timeline just uh, one audio clip. And first thing I'll do is click right there on the audio bars to get a better idea of what's going on. Now we'll see when I play this, just hit the space bar to start playing. I just hit the zero there for a second, and I hit the zero again. You don't really want to do that. I might want to take that volume down just a little bit, and real easy to do. As you can see in our other video, um, adjusting audio levels, all I have to do is hit the control key and the minus key, and you can see the volume come down by one decibel at a time, and that's what I'll go ahead and do. Play it again. Looks pretty good. I'm hitting minus two, minus two, getting minus one, getting close to the zero, but I'm not hitting zero. Nice. Select your clip to make sure that it is active. Uh, make sure your inspector window is open by clicking here. Make sure the audio tab is selected. And here's where we're gonna go, right in here. The pan mode is set on none. I'll set it on stereo left, right. And now I get a slider. I get not only a slider, but I get a number over here, and let's go ahead and work on this with the slider first. So this is pretty simple, really. You just take the slider all the way over to the left, minus 100, that's 100% left channel, 100% right channel, or right back to the middle again. I can't hit zero exactly, so I'll just press the reset button to get back to zero again. Okay. Another way I can do this is simply hover over the number until you get the up-down arrows, then click up to go to the right, left, drag left to go to the left. Now a third thing I can do is to set keyframes. So what I'll do right where the playhead is right now, I'm going to click to add a keyframe, and then I'm going to drag this all the way down left channel. Now I'm going to come up the timeline a little bit, and I'm going to set another keyframe, click right there, and I'm going to bring it all the way up to the right, then I'll come up to the timeline, come up the timeline a little bit more, set another keyframe, and set her back to zero, and I'm not hitting zero exactly, that's a little tough, click once, press the zero key, hit return or enter. Now I've got my three keyframes set there for left channel, right channel, and back to zero. And as you scrub across the thing, you can uh, the, uh, the clip, you can see this moving. So I'll start right there and let's watch the audio bars now. Oh, right's coming in. Left is dropping away. Left didn't drop all the way down to zero, did it? And then we're back to neutral again. So let's take a look at exactly what's going on here. Uh, I will press uh, Shift Z to fit the timeline. There we go. Now the next thing I want to do is a right click on the clip and I want to show audio animation. Oh, I get this other small bar there, my keyframes, can't see exactly what they're doing, so hit the disclosure triangle, and there we go. There they all are. So, when I'm down here, should be... You can see this all in here dragged this all the way down to zero, so I've got exclusively 100% left channel, but now the right starts to come in, And there you go. Still getting a little bit of that left channel, of course, because it's not dropped to zero. Now, if you want long stretches of time uh, where it's absolutely left or absolutely right, and be honest with you, I'm not sure why you want to do this. You want to be a little bit subtle with this panning stuff. Use it uh, 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 carefully so it doesn't get to be too annoying for your audience. But in terms of setting keyframes, not only did we have this technique of clicking the diamond, uh, but you can also just hover your cursor over the line, hold down the option key, and click, 
and I've set another keyframe. So now I can click now and bring it up or down, but I can only bring it up or down. I can't bring it left or right. To move it left or right now, what I have to do is release the click and then click one more time, and now I can bring it left or right. Okay, so let's do this. Let's bring this all the way down here, and you can play around with this pretty much all day long to your heart's desire setting all your keyframes wherever you want them. Now let's say you want to delete certain keyframes after you're through getting it where you want it. A couple of different ways to do this. One, hover over the keyframe, do a right click, and then delete keyframe. It's one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it is in the inspector window. You see these, uh, the left arrow and the right arrow. If I press the right arrow, you can see I jump up to my last keyframe. Now I get an X in the triangle, and when I click that, the keyframe is deleted. Jump back a keyframe and delete that one, etc. So that's about it. As I say, kind of a quick one for you guys today. Uh, how to how to pan in three different techniques. Uh, a fourth different sec technique: setting your own keyframes manually and how to delete them. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.